Jehovah's Witness, what does the empty tomb mean to you? Maybe a better way to word that would be, what does the empty tomb prove? Okay? Now, let me, let me tell you what. Let me just read you a passage from the book of Matthew, chapter 28. This is the scripture that I want to really focus on. Uh, I will read a few others. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 5 and 6 say this. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Now, I want you to notice the phrase in verse 6, He is not here, for he is risen. And I want you to notice a word, a very key word in that phrase, and that's the word for. Actually, there are two phrases here. The first phrase is, he is not here. Okay, the second phrase is, he is risen. These are not two separate and independent statements. These are two statements that are linked together by the word for. Not, he is not here, and then he is risen. He is not here for he is risen. The word for is a connecting word that basically uses the second phrase to explain why the first phrase is true. The second phrase, he is risen, explains why he's not here. Now, this, I believe, is proof, proof positive, inarguable, irrefutable evidence that Jesus Christ rose from the grave bodily. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I want you to consider a couple of things here. Question number one, what did the women go to the tomb that morning to find? Okay, the obvious answer is a body. I think we would all agree on that. They went fully expecting and believing they were going to find the body of Jesus Christ. That's why they went there. The second question I would like to ask you is this. Did the angel know that's why the women had come to find the body? Did he know that? Well, obviously he did. Because in verse number 5, he says so. He says, I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. Now I ask you, what was crucified? the body of Jesus Christ. That's what was nailed to the cross. So the angel is saying here, I know that you seek Jesus, which was nailed to the cross. In other words, I know that you've come to see his body. That's the only thing they would be coming there for. Okay, that statement comes right before verse 6, where he says, He is not here, for he is risen. So let me summarize what the Bible said here. The angel sees the women and says, I know why you're here. I know you've come to see the body of Jesus, but his body's not here. Why? For he is risen. Okay, that's, that's very, very uh, plain to see from the reading of the scripture here. We see no such statement by the angel that says, He is not here, for he has been dissolved. We see no such statement that says, He is not here, for he has been disintegrated. We don't see where the angel said, He is not here, for he has been removed by Jehovah God, and we have no clue where he is. We don't see that. The angel gives us a very clear concise and easy to understand explanation for the absence of the body from the tomb. He is not here. Why? For he is risen. That's why Christians believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you asked the angel that day why he was not here, what is proven by the empty tomb, the angel would say to you, he was risen. If you ask these two women who after this encounter what the empty tomb meant to them, they would have said, it means that he's risen. If you ask any born-again Christian today what the empty tomb means to them, the answer would obviously be, he is risen. But let me ask you this, if you're a Jehovah's Witness. What does the empty tomb prove to you? If the quotations from your own literature that I just read are correct, then the answer to that question, what does the empty tomb mean, or what does it prove, the answer would have to be, not much. It wouldn't prove anything. It certainly wouldn't prove a bodily resurrection. It would simply prove that, that Jehovah God intervened somehow and took the body and, and dissolved it or did something with it, and we'll never see it again. But that's not what the Bible says. He is not here, for he is risen. Now, what I would like to do is share with you a couple of other scriptures here. Um, the next one I'd like to read to you is found in the book of Luke chapter number 24. Uh, this is one of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus Christ. 
where the watchtower claims he simply materialized a fleshly body. I want to talk to you just about that uh, idea right here. Let me read verses 36 through verse 39 of, of Luke 24. The Bible says, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted. Why were they scared? Okay, right here tells us. And suppose that they had seen a spirit. Now let me just stop right there. If the watchtower is correct, that the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ was merely a spirit being, then the disciples had it right. Because that's what they were supposing. They were scared to death. They thought they were seeing a spirit. Now, if the watchtower is correct, they were seeing a spirit. So you would think, if that's the case, there would be no need for Jesus to correct them. He could have simply said, you're right, I'm a spirit, but it's still me. I'm just in spirit form now. You don't have to be afraid. Why, why didn't he do that? Okay? Instead, he does correct this idea. He corrects the false idea that he was a spirit. And he says in verse 38, and he said unto them, why are you troubled, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Why are you thinking like what, what you're thinking? He didn't say you got it right. He said, why are you thinking this? Verse 39, he says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Those words, I myself, are very, very um, important also. Because these are the disciples who had walked with Jesus for three and a half years. They were used to seeing him in a physical body. So when he says, it is I myself, he's, he's merely telling them, this is the me that you've come to know all these years. This is the me that you're used to. This is my physical body. You're looking at it. Okay? Now listen to this. If that weren't enough, this should settle the argument. He says, For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. Rather than affirming that he is a spirit, he's actually contradicting their false idea that he's a spirit. And he's telling them, I have flesh and bones. He did not say flesh and blood. He said flesh and bones. Okay, that's very important also. Um, but he comes and he says, I have flesh and bones. I'm sorry for the puppy whimpering in the background. Um, so that proves right there that he was not a spirit. He says he's not a spirit. So why did Jehovah's Witnesses teach that he was a spirit? As a Jehovah's Witness, you're going to have to decide if you're going to take the words of Jesus Christ or the words of the Watchtower Society uh, from Brooklyn, New York, where uh, men decide the interpretations of the Bible. Now, if that still isn't enough, let's look at a verse where Jesus himself predicts his own resurrection. Look at John chapter number 2, verses number 19 through 21. Jesus said this, he, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Now, folks, that's very important. Jesus is making a prediction here. Okay, he's talking to the Jews, and when he makes a statement, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, they think immediately he's talking about the building, the temple, uh, the building. That's not what he was talking about. Verse 21 tells us what he was talking about. You know, they looked at him and says, this thing took 46 years to build, and you're going to build it in three days? But see, he was talking about another temple. Okay, verse 21 tells us the temple, but he spake of the temple of his body, his physical, fleshly body that was right there with them speaking. That's what he said. He says, if you destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. Now, folks, that's a clear prediction coming from the mouth of our Lord and Savior that if you destroy this body, I will raise this very body up in three days. There's no way you can harmonize this scripture with the watchtower teaching that Jehovah God removed or dissolved or disintegrated the body. And see, all of, with all the watchtowers disposing of Jesus and disintegrating him into thin air, the truth gets lost in all that, that he is not here. Why? For he's risen. His body's no longer in the tomb because his body's risen. Okay, and Jesus himself said that. Now, let me deal very briefly, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. One of the ways the Watchtower tries to explain this passage in John, where it said he spoke of the temple of his body, is to deny that he's talking about his physical body, but to say that he's referring to his body as the Christian congregation that he was going to raise up. Um, that's impossible because of two words in verse 19. Okay. 
And I want you, if you've got your Bibles, I want you to notice in verse 19 two words that completely nullify that as a possibility. When he said this and it. Those two words remove any possibility that Jesus Christ was talking about the establishment of the Christian congregation. Okay, because when he looked at him, he said, destroy this body. Okay, at that time, there was no Christian congregation had been raised up as of yet. So, whatever body he's talking about, I'm sorry, destroy this temple. Whatever temple he's talking about has to be one that's right there. Because he says, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. What is the it? The it is the same as the this. Whatever temple is destroyed will be the temple that's raised up. So, if this were talking about the Christian congregation being raised up as his, quote, body in a spiritual sense, I guess my question would be, when at this time had the Christian congregation been destroyed? Because the temple that's going to be raised up, according to verse 19, is a temple that was destroyed. Okay? And once again, we have the answer in verse 21. He spake of the temple of his body. How do I know this is speaking of his literal, physical body? Well, verse 22 um, it says, when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. Now, that right there should settle it. This is not talking about the establishment of the Christian congregation as his body, because what event was it that caused the disciples to remember his statement, destroy this temple in three days I'll raise it up? What event caused them to remember that? Was it when the a Christian congregation had been established and they're all sitting around in church and one of them says, wow, look, at, isn't this wonderful? We're here in, in church and we, you know, now we remember when Jesus told us he was going to do this back when he said destroy this temple and I'll raise it up. Now we know what he meant. No, it wasn't that. What reminded them of this event was the resurrection. Read it again, verse 22. Okay. When therefore he was risen from the dead, the disciples remembered he had said this. If he was not talking about the destruction of his physical body, then why did the disciples at his resurrection connect this statement with his resurrection? Why not connect it to the establishment of the Christian congregation? What was it about his resurrection that made them remember? This is plain, folks. When they saw him, when Thomas put his hands into his side and, and, and saw the prince and, and confessed him as my Lord and my God, John 20, 28, when the disciples saw him with their own eyes and were able to touch him, they remembered him saying that he was going to do this. That he was going to destroy, or that this temple would be destroyed and he would raise it on the third day. So I want to come back to you once again with the question. If you're a Jehovah's Witness, once again, please leave a comment after this video. Uh, you don't need to insult me or to... Call me names. Unfortunately, I've had a lot of that from Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, but what I would like for you to do is, if your religion's right, and if I'm missing the correct understanding of these scriptures, then show me. Show me where I'm wrong. Show me why the Watchtower statements are correct. And show me how those statements can be reconciled with the angel statement where he, the angel says, He is not here, for he is risen. So what I want to close with this question, Jehovah's Witness, please answer this if you comment. What does the empty tomb mean to you? What does the empty tomb prove to you? And in closing, I want to say this. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the key foundational doctrine of Christianity. There are some things you can be wrong about, and maybe you'll get by, maybe it'll be okay. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not one of those things that you can afford to be wrong about. Either it happened according to the scriptures, or it happened according to the way the Watchtower teaches it. You're going to have to decide that. All I'm asking from you is simply this. You take what the Bible says, and you compare that with what your literature says, and then make a decision in your mind and your heart who you're going to believe. Are you going to continue to believe what you've been taught just because it's the easy thing to do, just because of family relationships or friendships or because the something your pride won't let you admit that you've been wrong? Or will you simply say that the Word of God is going to be the final authority as to what you believe? What does the empty tomb prove to you? And I would ask you this, if the Watchtower got it wrong on the resurrection, what else might they be wrong about? That's something to think about. Thank you.